Hey guys, so um, this is going to be a quick video, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, a, a good example of front end versus back end in a practical setting. Like if I were to actually break it down and show you the code, this is, I'm going to show it to you right here. Um, this is a real world uh, kind of demonstration of the difference between front end code and back end code. So here I got this application opened up. And what this does is it allows the uh, user to create a video rental in a video store. So that's kind of what the software is here. Um, I'll show you guys it real quick. Um, so um, this is obviously not complete, but you can see here how um, there's a spot for a customer and a movie that they're going to check out. And then eventually this is going to... Um, keep allowing you to add more and more movies so you could add up to like five movies per customer but anyway i'll just use myself as an example um, i put myself in the database as a customer so see as i'm typing here see how it pops up and auto completes that so um, that is using a special um plugin and that is called uh twitter type ahead so you can see that right here dot type ahead um, so if you go google uh, Twitter type ahead, or actually I'll probably put the link on the video description. Uh, this is a, an example of a front end, uh, library, I guess. Um, and, uh, basically what it does is it, it provides you with functionality to easily make that autocomplete function work. So you can read more about Twitter type ahead at the link I'm going to provide. And, um, this is the JavaScript code that's using it here. But, what I want to show you is the interaction between uh, the front end and the back end here. So this CSHTML file, um, which is my form that you just saw, that's what this is right here. Um, you can see here how we have the, um, the sections of the form for customer. And then we have the input box right here. And then we have uh, the section for movie. And then we have the input box right here, which I haven't hooked up yet with the type, type ahead. And then you could go down here and see how um, this script area right here, how uh, how JavaScript, you know, we, we usually start with document.ready function. And this is where the JavaScript starts. And um, basically, this Bloodhound thing is part of that Twitter type ahead. And it creates a special object for us using my uh, backend API endpoint. So those of you who don't really know what an API is or how it works, this is a good example right here. So um, you can see here how I provided this, this uh, API endpoint URL and then wildcard query, which basically what's going to happen is when the, the user starts to type the name in there in, in, the, in the text box, that's going to go in here. And then, as you can see, um, the query actually gets put at the end of this URL here, and then it, it actually um, it hits up my API, and it looks for whatever name you're typing in. So this is the select for the uh, customer uh, box. So it's selecting by customer ID, which correlates to this right here. So, and then um, we're specifying some settings, basically, for the type ahead. Um, plug-in, and those settings say that the minimum length has to be three characters. So that's why, like, if I start doing this, see, it doesn't tell, it doesn't do anything because there's only two characters here or one character. But as soon as I go like this, see, see how it pops my name up there? Well, that's because of the min length three. So um, now I'm going to show you kind of what's going on with the back end side of things. So this is a this is a front end application right here, front end uh, script or program, and what it's doing is it's hitting this query, like I said, or this uh, it's querying this API endpoint. Now let me show you the back end. So this is the server side of things right here, and see how see how I have this right here. It says public IHTTP action result get customers string query equals null. So what's going on here is when you go to slash API slash customers API slash query, right, like right there, 
what it's doing is it's uh, putting the query in here. And it's, it's basically running this function. And uh, it's putting, it's replacing whatever you put in that query into this area here, which then gets put down into here. So you can see here what I'm doing here is um, I'm saying customer's query is, and then this is the, this part can be kind of tricky, but it's, it's actually not that hard to understand. What's going on is uh, this context represents the database. So just think of that as the database. So I'm saying um, database, uh, customer's table, and then include membership type, because membership type is actually a separate table. So we're basically saying, hey, database, go grab uh, the customer's table and the membership type table and store the uh, output in this customer's query uh, variable here. Then I'm saying if, um, so if this, the query, which is what's up here, if it is not null or blank, so basically, in other words, if, if this is not empty, if, uh, if the input given to us here in this area is not empty, then customer's query now equals customer query where, and then um, where name contains the input given. So once again, let me break this down. All this is saying is, hey, database, um, go and search customers and pull out all entries where the name contains what we're giving it, what we gave it back back over here from uh, Twitter type ahead. So essentially it's saying, hey, go look for this name in the database and pull it out and give it to us. That's all, that's all this is really saying, but this is kind of cryptic and can be hard to understand, but th these are called link queries and they use all kinds of crazy advanced things like um, Lambda expressions and, and delegates and stuff. But Really, though, if you really look at how this is being used, it's not that hard to understand. We're saying search the database and pull out stuff where um, where C, which in this case is this is just a this is just a representation of customer. That's why it says customer C. So where customer name contains uh, the name we gave it. So let me run through this one more time. You, you go here on this page, you enter stuff into this text box here. And then as you're entering it, as soon as it hits min length three, it's then going to run this right here. So whatever you have input in that box, it's gonna run, it's gonna um, uh, go to this URL, which is our API endpoint. Um, and then that is going to send whatever it is in this query spot. So the first three letters, basically, it's gonna send that to this function here, which is in our backend server, um, it's going to go run get customers with the three letters here, and then it's going to go ahead and pull the customers out of the database and the membership type tables, and then it's going to, um, as long as whatever was entered is not nothing, <laughs> then um, it's going to pull out of the database customers whose name equal or contain actually contain uh, the three letters that we gave it or more. And then you can see here, it's going to return a list because we were saying uh, customer DTOs equals customers query dot to list dot select. And then um, just ignore this part right now because it's kind of advanced, but basically what it's doing is it's just, uh, it's just uh, returning the information so that it can be displayed properly. So when we say return okay customer DTOs, that's where we're giving it. That that's what allows us to do. That's what when I when I go like this, that's what makes this happen because now we've returned the rest of it. Okay, so that literally is a practical real world example of front end versus back end programming. Okay, so this is my back end code and it's interacting with the database, and this is my front end code and it is interacting with the user um, directly on the page basically. Okay, and then this this requires a back end um, program to function because it has to it has to get stuff from the database, and then um, our back end code provides stuff from the database. 
um, and manages all that, and then it returns stuff to the front end code. So if you were working on the front end team, you would be working on this type of thing. Um, I mean, this is very simple. <laughs> it gets much more complicated. But um, and then if you're working on the back end team, you could be working on this kind of thing, where um, you know we're actually uh, managing data, pulling stuff out of the database, saving it to the database, all this kind of stuff. So um, yeah, that's it. So have a good day, guys, and thanks for watching.